From Las Vegas, Nevada, it's the first of two Mountain West Conference semifinals tonight. First up, the top seed Utah State Aggies take on the number five seed San Diego State Aztecs. And hi everyone, alongside Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. Evan Washburn is with us as well. A good crowd here at the Thomas and Mack Center as these two teams battle it out for a spot in tomorrow's championship game. There's Brian Dutcher in his seventh year with the Aztecs. A quarterfinal win in overtime yesterday against UNLV. Meanwhile, Utah State also had to go to overtime yesterday. Danny Sprinkle's team had their hands full with the nine seed Fresno State. And then they beat them up in OT to advance today. So, Lap, what kind of game are we in for tonight? You know, you have one team that is really, really good defensively, among the nation's best, and then you got another team that's among, and that's San Diego State, and then you have a team in Utah State that is great offensively, and we have two premier big men in the country, one on each team. Jaden Ledee for San Diego State against great Osibor of Utah State. Our officials tonight, Randy McCall, Deron White, and Eric Curry. Utah State, the top seed, wearing the home white uniform, San Diego State in black, and we are underway. And you see, you're going to see only man to man from San Diego State. If they play zone, there's something wrong. Here's that matchup Asabor and Ladee battling inside. Asabor had it knocked away, but a foul is called on Micah Parrish. You know, that it, 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 it's probably the only matchup they could do is at San Diego State, but that's a real gamble, putting the D on Asabor. I'll be interested to see if it's the same way on the other end, because last night, Andrew, as you saw, 20 fouls he drew, which is unheard of, and the D drew 17. So if these guys are guarding each other, I hope they don't foul. Free throw is also a concern for Asabor. Yesterday, he was 15 of 24 from the line. He's got blood on his yeah, lip. Blood on his lip. So Asabor will have to get attended to. Good news there you see on the left of your screen Mason Falslev who did not play in yesterday's quarterfinal because of a shoulder injury is going to give it a go here today and he's back in the starting lineup for Danny Sprinkle. Yeah he's played well lately in the five games prior to yesterday where he didn't play he's an average of 13 and 4. Chance of let's go Aztecs as you would expect San Diego State traveling well but a good number of Aggies fans here in Vegas as well yeah you're right about this free throw shooting with him he shoots so many of them 15 for 24 yesterday Darion Trammell for three and it's good and he shot it well yesterday he finished with 16 points yeah he was one of their better players because the bench yesterday really two for 15 San Diego State's bench was yesterday. Here is Darius Brown, and that won't go. The rebound to Ladee. Yeah, and Asabor's got Ladee. And the double comes. And a foul is called on Ian Martinez, who was in a bit of foul trouble yesterday as well. Yeah, he had a rough night, one for 12 yesterday. Only six points for Martinez, the senior from Costa Rica. Here's Lamont Butler in the paint. Lost a handle on it, but right to Parrish. Parrish, turn around. Off the window. 
Falslev to the basket, counted in one. Welcome back, Mason Falslev. Wow, talk about a strong drive. And you don't usually get to the hoop that easy against this team. Strong. And, and the foul is called against Ladee. So he picks up one early here in the first half. Ladee goes up to get the rebound. Oh, nice dribbling by Ladee, but he can't hit the jumper. He's a little bit better than Osibor. Osibor's a very good ball handler also. He's a little bit better from the perimeter getting his own shot. Martinez had it knocked away. It was deflected. Brown feeding Johnson down low and another foul. That's going to be on Lamont Butler. Trying to lob it in to Isaac Johnson. Seven footer. Couple of fouls that the Aztecs bench has not appreciated. I think they're discussing if it's a shooting foul or not. Wow, I, I mean... Now they're going to say it's on the floor. I thought it was a lob, is what it looked like to me, that he was trying to... I think the intent was to catch it and go right up yeah. with it, but instead it's on the floor. Asibor. Ladi slipped, and Asibor with the jam. Well... They've made it known what they're trying to do. They want to get it to Osibor as much as they can. Powell in the corner. Drives into the paint. Trying to get around Johnson. He cannot. And now he puts up an air ball. Too many fakes. You got to throw it out. He's not biting on the first or second one. Martinez, a three. They need him tonight. That, he's one of their best three-point shooters, and he was completely missing in action yesterday. The fouls obviously started him off on the wrong foot. 7-0 run for Utah State. Tremell. And it goes out of bounds to the Aggies. Yeah, Ian Martinez, you know, as many shooters as you can have out there against San Diego State, the better, because you've got to spread them out. They help just too good, and they protect the lane. If you're not making any shots, you're going to have a big problem. Reese Waters has checked in for San Diego State along with Elijah Saunders. He was part of that group yesterday that had a rough night off the bench. Saunders was 0 for 5. Asibor with Ladi on him. This Asibor, is some battle. Yeah. With the left hand, no, but he follows it up. These guys are going to bang all night. Two of the best bigs you're going to find. Utah State has made four of its last five shots. During a 9-0 run, Saunders can't stop the run. He's another one we said about their bench last night who really struggles. And a whistle away from the ball. Is this on Ladee? I think so. Wow. Two fouls in less than four minutes. You know, I said it, Andrew, in the beginning, they were taking a big chance putting Ladee on Osibor. And now he's got to sit 
wow. for at least eight minutes. It's my guess. Tough one there for the Aztecs. Really tough. False left. Not this time, and out of bounds. It'll be San Diego State basketball. Media time now. We'll keep things right here. And, you know, I understand what Brian Dutcher was thinking, Andrew, because, you know, the only other guy you could put on him is Jay Powell, who's so thin that that would be tough, but you'd rather have your guy Ladie in the game, I think. Lap, let's take another look at that second foul that was called against Jaden Ledee, who's coming back down the court. And you can see, wow, it didn't look like he, no. he looked almost like he was trying to get his balance. I mean, that's a, that's a flop. That's a tough way to get your second really foul in tough. four minutes. 100%. That is tough. You're costing San Diego State their man for a good eight minutes. And when he comes back, who's he guarding? You can't put him on yeah. Osibor again. And the problem for San Diego State is they don't play zone. They played seven possessions of zone all year, so you know they can't even. They, they, uh, who knows? Maybe they'll go to try something different tonight. I don't know. Usually you don't like to use things this time of year that you don't practice much. Aztecs have started two of seven from the floor, while Utah State is four out of seven. San Diego State has missed its last four field goal attempts. Good crowd here in Vegas, 10-5, Aggies in front. Waters, and that stops the 9-0 run. I mean, most of the year, he was their second leading scorer, but in Mountain West games, he has really struggled. They need him. Osibor turns it over. Good defense by the Aztecs. Waters off the mark, but cleaning it up is Miles Heidi. Welcome to Las Vegas. It's Mountain West Conference Tournament semifinal action. 
And we're just over five minutes in. Utah State, the top seed, out to a 10-9 lead on the fifth-seeded San Diego State Aztecs. Alongside Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. Evan Washburn is with us as well. And the big story right now is that Jaden Ledee is not on the court right now, presented by Kubota. That's because Ledee picked up two fouls in the first four minutes of the game. The second one was very ticky-tack, but Ledee has to sit right now. Lap. Yeah, I mean, the second one was really not a good call, and now he's got to sit out probably till the eight-minute mark, and he cannot pick up his third. Parrish connects to give the Aztecs the lead. Some of the guys who played bad yesterday for San Diego State have done early. Waters, Michael Parrish, yesterday they struggled. Asapor with the jam. And you know, the D started the game guarding Asapor, and I was questioning, well, I'll tell you, he's a tough guy to guard. He drew 20 fouls yesterday. Ledee drew 17. These are two of the most fouled guys in America. Tough for them to guard each other. Asabor has seven of the 12 early for the Aggies. Oh, that's a travel. Parrish gets away with it. Oh, my goodness. I mean, he went a long way. Asabor ahead of the pack. Heidi's on him right now, and that one goes out of bounds to the Aztecs. You know, Asabor, just like Ledee, very good off the bounce. I mean, he takes that thing from the top of the key. You don't see people get these kind of baskets against San Diego State often. And let's see here. Oh, now that's a travel and a half. <laughs> when I was a kid, they, we grew up right near the A train, the subway. He said, take the A train. That's what he did. <laughs> he took the A train there. Well, Parrish was 0 for 8 in yesterday's quarterfinal win over UNLV. Today, he's 3 for 3 for 6 points. Looking for more right here. Give it to him. Wow. Parrish is hot. Looks like a different guy. Good crowd here on both sides. The Aztecs fans making some noise now. Asabor fakes the three, drives in. He's got two more. Now, why would Heidi jump for a shot fake from Asabor, who all year long is three for 11 with the three-point line? If you go for his shot fake, there's something wrong with you. Brian Dutcher said the same thing, just <laughs> in some different words yeah. to Miles Heidi. <laughs> Parrish, not this time, his first miss. Great pass. Brown lost it. Gets it back, though, with the shot clock at 20. Plenty of time for the Aggies. I said he looked like he was going to get a layup, but San Diego State, they helped so well. They came in that last second and stopped Brown from getting that layup. Martinez with four. Martinez launches a three, and he draws the foul. Parrish is called for the foul. It'll be... Three free throws for Martinez when we come back. For those of you watching our free streaming coverage, it will conclude after the commercial break, but we will continue on CBS Sports Network. You are watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Back in Vegas, our first Mountain West semi of the night, San Diego State. By one against Utah State, as you see the updated tournament bracket later tonight. Colorado State and New Mexico will meet for a spot in the championship game. Moments ago, Evan Washburn with Danny Sprinkle. Well, Coach, the big story early, Jaden Ledee out of this game right now with two fouls. How does that impact what you guys can and will do? Yeah, I mean, they've been playing better since he got out. You know, they're scoring, they're playing a little faster. Yeah, we got to keep, keep attacking the rim. Great's doing a good job of it, but it doesn't matter who they got in. They always got five good players on the court. What does that show you about how this game's getting called early? Yeah, I mean, it's been a physical game. That's what we expected, and that's how both teams play. Coach, thanks. You bet, thanks. Well, it's easy to say now, Lap, but I think coming in, we both agreed that whichever big guy stayed out of foul trouble, it could be a huge key in this game. And right now, that that's Ledee on the bench with two. Yeah, and they were guarding each other early on, and you knew some the way these guys play. Yesterday, Osborne drew 20 fouls in that game. He shot 24 free throws. Ledee shot 18. He drew 17 fouls. These guys get fouled a ton. Three free throws for Martinez. 
And Ladie has now sat for the last four minutes and five seconds. And you know, it also allows, if Danny Sprinkle wants to take Osibor out for a rest a little bit too, now that Ladie's not in there. Martinez, third best in the Mountain West from the free throw line this year at 84%. You see the numbers yesterday were not pretty for the senior against Fresno State. Both of these teams going to overtime yesterday. Aggies had their hands full with the Bulldogs and UNLV with some late drama to force overtime, but the Aztecs prevailed. Here comes Sacco and a foul on Waters. All right, lap tonight's keys to the game are brought to you by Daisy Cottage Cheese. What do you got? Well, for San Diego State, they got to force turnovers because that allows them to get out in transition. Limit fouls on Osibor. Now, this is the first time I've ever in all these years used kind of the same thing for two guys, for both teams. Limit fouls on the deep. These guys get to the foul line so much, you got to try and not let them do that. Utah State's got to get out and run. You cannot set up against San Diego State for 40 minutes because they're too hard to score against in the half court. Daisy Cottage Cheese history here as coach has used two of the same things for his keys. <laughs> unprecedented. That's unprecedented. That's really first. Is. This is huge. Big moment. These two teams split during the regular season with each team winning on their home floor. The most recent meeting was February 20th in Logan. The Aggies won 68-63. Waters is short, the rebound to Sacco. Here is Sacco down low. Nice work off the glass. They are an elite transition team in terms of efficiency. They're in the top five in the nation in scoring per possession in transition. And you're gonna see it tonight. It's very important against San Diego State. And a whistle inside. Let's check in with Evan. Guys, an injury update for the Utah State Aggies. Mason Falsev, who's about to check into this game, missed last night's quarter with that right shoulder injury. Was able to take part in shoot around this morning. Talking to Danny Sprinkle, he said he's still fighting through some pain in that shoulder, but he's going to go. And as we saw, that's huge to the rotation if foul trouble is a part of this game to have him available. Yeah, no doubt, Evan, averaging 11 points per game as Asibor is called for his first foul. And, and it gets everybody in their regular role. Uduje was the sixth man, one, was co-sixth man of the year in the conference. Now he gets to be the sixth man again for Utah State instead of starting like he did yesterday. Darius Brown comes out. He'll get a breather. Waters. And another whistle. That fouls against the aforementioned false left. Now, we saw a lot of fouls in the quarterfinal day yesterday and already 10 fouls in the first nine minutes today. Physical game. And that was not a good call on Osibo, by the way. Turnover. False left. Bounces into Udige, but could not handle it. And now a loose ball scramble. And we're going to have a tie-up, and the ball will go to the Aztecs. I'll tell you, I've seen false level a lot on tape, but he's fast. I and mean, he was busting that one up the floor. Well, not only high school basketball for false level at Skyview High School in Utah, but he also is a dual-threat quarterback. Saunders hesitated on the three. And usually he doesn't, but he's really been struggling. Butler will launch. Waters comes in for the rebound and puts it right back up again. That one won't go, and it goes over the backboard out of bounds. A slow start yesterday for San Diego State. Fell behind early against UNLV, and that has kind of been their M.O. of late. They trailed after five minutes in 11 of their last 12 games. They really can struggle at times offensively, but they had 25 offensive rebounds in that game. They took 19 more shots 
than UNLV in the game. That was a season high on the offensive glass for the Aztecs. Aduje on the wing. Aduje with the shot clock winding down. No, and knocked out of bounds. It'll remain with the Aggies. Brian Dutcher, you can read his lips over the back. But no call. He wants Osibor to get that second foul in the worst way, believe me. Well, in addition to Ladie, Parrish also has two fouls for San Diego State. Osibor inside. And again, Dutcher was looking for a call. Left hand, spin. Great feet and great hands. Asabor already in double figures with 11. Saunders, can he get going? Continues to struggle, and Carson Templin playing for the second consecutive game with the rebound. Yeah, he gave them some decent minutes yesterday. Ball slab, what a move. Well, he's Brian a Dutcher wants a timeout. Aztecs have gone close to five minutes without a field goal. And the Aggies. And their fans feeling good early on a Friday night in Vegas. We're back with our Reese's player profile, and we focus on Khalifa Sako, the junior from France. And as we told you yesterday, currently observing Ramadan and is fasting from sunrise to sundown. So, Evan, what's the latest? Well, guys, here in Las Vegas, sundown 648 local, so that meant Sako could start to consume some fluids and some food. Talk to head athletic trainer Britt Ritter with Utah State, and he said the plan was to get fluids into him, get a little bit of food, some Pedialyte, some sugars, and that should impact his ability, not just to sustain in this game, but guys, recover. After the game yesterday, he played 13 minutes. He couldn't have anything for three hours. Wow. Yesterday, a noon local tip, but today, with the 6.30 local tip, he had gone all day without eating or drinking, so you could see that as soon as the sun went down, he, as Evan reported, got to work. If they win, tomorrow would be a 3 o'clock local tip for Sacco and the Aggies, who right now are on a 13-1 to -one run. And... For Marche Johnson, nowhere close on the free throw. He is 0 for 4 from the line now this year. Yeah, not a guy that plays much. But with Osibor out of the game, they figured they could put him in for a little bit. Falslev again racing down the court. I mean, the baskets that they are getting against San Diego State, you don't see all these layups at the rim. Really uncharacteristic of the Aztecs. Pain point 16 to 6 in favor of the Aggies. Falslev, though, just picked up his second foul. Now, one thing we got to keep in mind we have one team elite defensively in San Diego State, but Utah State is elite offensively, and right now, the elite offense is beating the elite defense. What would you rather have, Lap? I'd rather be elite Fight. offensively. I'll tell you the truth. I think too many times, I mean, no, but you want to be good defensively. Oh, yeah, like, you, you know, Utah State is good defensively, they're not elite. I'd rather be great elite offensively. Martinez pushed to the ground, and a foul against the Aztecs. That's their seventh team foul. Then again, maybe that's why I'm sitting here with you now <laughs> instead, of, instead of on the other side. Well, you always told me it's basketball. And, so I used to tell my assistants, the game is called basketball. When you make <laughs> baskets, everything is easier. Yeah. I had a feeling you were going to go the offensive way. So one and one here for Martinez, who's already three of three from the line. Earlier today, Danny Sprinkle named a Naismith Coach of the Year semifinalist. What a job he has done. And how about this? Brian Dutcher has seen enough. Ladie back in with two fouls. I said he'd come back in at the eight-minute mark, play three or four minutes, and it's, now Osibor is out. 
good time to bring him back in if you're going to bring him back in. So Ladee sat for seven and a half minutes. I would think Danny Sprinkle, you're, on the one hand, you want to bring Osibor back in. On the other hand, you don't want Osibor to get his second foul. And right away, Ladee draws a foul, which as Lap pointed out, he did 17 times yesterday against UNLV. You know, Andrew, just talk about how elite San Diego State is defensively. They're going to get in the NCAA tournament this year. They're going to be the fifth team in the last 25 years to be last in their conference in three-point field goal percentage and in field goal percentage. That's how hard it is to make the NCAA tournament when you're that bad on offense. But it also shows how good they are on defense. Asabor has come back in, so I know that you'll be fascinated to see who defends him on the other end of the floor. I have to think they got to put, I know it's not a good matchup, but they can't put the D on him. The D makes the front end. And on the other hand, I wouldn't put Asabor on the D, on the D either. And here's the Dutcher D, the Aztecs, their trademark over the years. I mean, to make the NCAA tournament be last in your conference in the two most important offensive stats is incredible. Johnson had it, and it will be Utah State basketball. Well, it looks like with D's got Osibor. San Diego State is two of six from the free throw line. I'll tell you what, get him the ball because you know that he's going to let him score if he catches it down low. The run is up to 17 to two. Ladi is on Asabor. Shot clock at four. Brown off balance. Shot is good. High off the glass, Darius Brown, and everything going the Aggies' way early. Tough shot there. Ladee over Osibor, not even close. San Diego State going through one of their droughts again. Jackson the three. How good was he yesterday? Career high 16. He was unbelievable. And they needed him yesterday. And Utah State has doubled up San Diego State here with 7-10 to go. A 22-2 run. They were down 17 to UNLV late in the season and came back on lost by a couple, but this Utah State team is really good offensively. Barish with two fouls. Spinning and hitting. Michael Parrish already in double figures. He's got 10 points. First field goal for the Aztecs in the last six minutes and 18 seconds. Yeah, I mean, the D scores 20, and their next guy is like 9.8. They only have one double figure scorer, so that means he's got to be out there. Martinez, three, no, and the rebound to Powell. Oh, bad foul. Asabor with the foul. Danny Sprinkle right away upset as Asabor picks up his second. So now both big men with two fouls. But so far, the Aggies rolling in Vegas. You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Coach, what has to change defensively to try and cut down this momentum for Utah State? We got to get back on the break. Can't give them fast break baskets. Make them beat us in the half court if that's going to happen. So we got to take away the fast breaks. What's the coaching point to Jaden defensively to avoid getting three here in the final portions of this first half? We're going to try to double now so that he doesn't get it. Try to give him some assistance, double in the post so he's not one on one in there. Coach, thank you. Thanks. Well, I'll tell you what, Andrew, I think, number one, that's a good idea. But number two, Osibor is probably going to be out for the rest of the half now, so he's not really going to have to deal with a post player that he has to double. But you take a look here. Osibor, five for six from the field. He is great down low, a tenacious offensive rebound, but then he takes it off the dribble. San Diego State doesn't step in and give any help. 
and he just goes right to the rim and dunks it. Asabora with 10 points in the paint. The Aztecs as a team have eight. He's missed two shots in two days. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Meanwhile, for the Aztecs, Parrish, five of six for 10 points. The rest of the team is a combined three for 17 for nine points. Well, I'll tell you what, if San Diego State is going to make a move, these next six minutes got to be it with Asabor out of the game. One and one, and Powell misses the free throw. But Harris scoops up the loose ball. Butler catch and shoot three. It's good. Big shot for San Diego State. Butler had a dozen yesterday, as you see the foul trouble on both sides. Asabor is on the bench. And a travel is called against Martinez. See, when your guy, who's like such a focal point on your team because he's so good, is out of the game, and he, you were playing through him the whole game, now you got to adjust on the fly really quickly against a great defensive team. Not easy. Five forty to go in the first half. A spot in the championship game awaits the winner. Tramel, nice dish to Powell. Points off turnovers in San Diego State's favor, nine to two over the Aggies. And now the Aztecs fans trying to will San Diego State to some momentum here. Sacco lost it. And Butler tracks it down. Up ahead is Ladee with Jackson back. Ladee wins that battle. And Danny Sprinkle calls a timeout. A 9-0-1 by San Diego State. Boy, he's upset with Sacco. All of a sudden, Aztecs coming right back. 34-26, Ladee with the finish. Eight-point game. You are watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Right here, Utah State up by eight. The Aztecs on a 9-0 run lap. Well, Tramel does a great job here. He made a, a pass play first, then he drives it, and the help's going to come in, but Martinez does not rotate inside of Jay Powell, and that's why he's able to get that dunk. He comes in a little bit late. So a 9-0 run. And seven of the nine have come with Asabor on the bench. That second foul that Asabor pick, picked up was such a bad foul, and that thing could turn this game around now if, if the Aztecs come all... They were down 17. Now it's eight. Brown bad leans shot. into oh. one and still hits, wow. and then has a few words for the Aztecs fans. He just makes some tough shots. He, he was great in the second half yesterday. In the first half, he was terrible. Another jam for Ladine. See, the worst thing that Sacco could do there is go for a steal. He should just, if he's got position on him, get behind him and make him shoot over you. Templin back at the scores table with two fouls. Johnson has a size advantage. Instead, it's Martinez for three. And the weak side rebound to Paris. Butler draws the foul. That's the first on Darius Brown. Well, you're going to see here when Sacco was three quartering him, when he lunged to get that steal, it's either do or die. Either you're getting the steal or he's scoring. Not a good gamble. So the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year, Lamont Butler, goes to the free throw line. CBS Sports celebrates Women's History Month, recognizing the outstanding contributions women have made on and off the field of play. Earlier this week, the UNLV women won the Mountain West Conference Tournament title, defeating San Diego State in the championship game. So Ladee will go out with 4.06 to play. And, you know, Brian Dutcher, I agree, but he has to, part of him has to be thinking, man, we can come all the way back in this game with him in the game now. But he gets his third, 
he'd be tough. So I think he made the right decision to get him out. Aztecs have struggled at the line. Just three of nine. They trail by seven. Jackson. Now Templin, too strong off the glass and tipped right to Butler. You can feel the momentum shifting in this building. Three and a half to go. Butler. And he draws another foul. So Lamont Butler will go to the line when we come back. Aztecs chipping away. It's a 12-2 run for San Diego State. Game one of two semis in Vegas. The Motley crew in the studio for AT&T at the half. Join Brent Stover, who I'm told is not on Twitter, Roy Hibbert, Pete Gillen, John Rothstein, and Jerry Palm. I mean, that is an unbelievable lineup in the studio. They'll break down the first half on AT&T at the half. And Jerry Palm, this is his current projections with the Mountain West getting six teams in the field. You know, I, I thought that uh, Nico Medba had a good line for us today. He said, San Diego State is going to be fifth seeded in our conference tournament. They maybe have a higher seed in the NCAA tournament <laughs> before it's all said and done. Yeah, Medved, who, who we'll see later with Colorado State, his team, the seventh seed. Said, How many times has the Mountain West tournament's seventh seed been a lock for the NCAA tournament? And that's why it's not crazy that we have the next game, semifinal game, is six. New Mexico versus seven, Colorado State. This year, not really a surprise. Two huge runs in this game as Powell gets the rebound, but misses the follow. And a foul is called. Utah State a 22-2 run, and that was answered by a 12-2 Aztecs run. You know, the free throw line is 4-11 for, for San Diego State. Now, normally 73% is a team. Let's send it over to Evan. And guys, in that last Utah State huddle, that was a focus for Danny Sprinkle, saying defensively, look, San Diego State guys, they're putting their head down, straight line drive, just trying to get to the basket and get fouled. Once guys obviously moving their feet more defensively, but I mean, Coach, you pointed this. Just get your hands up. Just stop fouling. Just get your hands up. Try and make it more difficult to shoot. That's going to be the focus as they look at this last four-minute stretch that they always see is so critical heading into half. Well, since Asubor went out, Evan, Utah State has one field goal and three turnovers. And well, and you know the thing, he got a bad foul that he committed, and Ladee got a bad foul that was a bad call. And both big guys still on the bench. San Diego State has really picked up the heat. You know, you don't have that guy to worry about in the post. You could put a lot more heat on them. Shot clock to three. Brown deep three. Won't go. And the rebound. Templin fighting for it. He's got it. And then a foul is committed. Good job down low by the freshman Carson Templin. I'll tell you, he showed me something the last couple of days. I know he's on a real good team, so he didn't play a whole lot, but it's a tough kid. Native of Fairview, Texas, as Jay Powell commits the foul. See the numbers for Templin played just 20 games in the regular season, but both games here in the Mountain West Tournament. Aztecs with the ball down by five. They have scored on each of their last eight possessions. And a blocking foul against Templin, and that's his third. A little too aggressive on that hedge by Templin that time. 
and clearly moving. So Templin with three, Asabor and Falslev with two apiece. Trammell at the line. Wow. They are really struggling to line. They've done well with Asabor on the bench. They have not done well from the free throw line. Just six for 14. Entered the conference tournament third in the Mountain West from the free throw line at 73%. Johnson tied up inside, and there's a whistle. Nice up and under there by Isaac Johnson. Heidi commits his first. And now Isaac Johnson at the line. Johnson hit a couple of threes in yesterday's win over Fresno State. And as you see our bracket with Colorado State and New Mexico set to play later tonight here on CBS Sports Network. Six-point lead for the Aggies as we approach two minutes to go in the first half. Great shot defensively, takes it away from Trammell, but then he nearly gives it right back. Aduje makes the catch, and a foul is called. Yeah, that was a very careless pass that Brown made there. This is a guy who's one of the best in the country. Top 10 assist to turnover ratio. Yeah, three and a half in that department as Lamont Butler commits his second foul. And he's coming out now, too. But Duje at the line for two. We've had 30 free throw attempts in the first half. We kind of expected it, but not with the two big guys out this much. We're not exactly a free throw clinic here in Las Vegas either. Waters recovers. Waters oh, shot. forces that one up. And the rebound is grabbed by Bird. And now a whistle. And the tie up favors the Aggies. Possession arrow, Aggies. Yeah, Michael Waters has forced a couple of shots. Reese Waters. 125 to go. A Duje jumper is well short. And the rebound to Miles Bird, the sophomore from Stockton, California. Pace of this game has slowed down just a little bit with one minute to go. For a while there, Utah State was running an offensive clinic. Shot clock at six, Bird for three. And Johnson, the seven-footer, is there for the rebound. 14-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Brown sends it out, and now Martinez will slow down. Utah State just one field goal in the last six minutes and 50 seconds. Defense, 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 
They have gotten cold since that big run, and Martinez still can't get one to go. Shot clock turned off. They should get the last one. Well, the Aztecs got a big shot right before the halftime buzzer yesterday against UNLV. Can they get another one here? Trammell, who hit the shot yesterday, hits another. Trammell hit a three to close out the first half against UNLV, and that served as a springboard yesterday. Will history repeat itself? Well, when you're down 17 and you cut it to three, that could be another shot that turns things around. Evan is with Danny Sprinkle. Coach, outside of getting great back in this game out of foul trouble, what do you guys have to do to recapture momentum here? Yeah, they started uh, they started getting really aggressive, just driving us, and we got to do a better job guarding without fouling. We uh, we didn't chest up very well, gave them some early free throws, and then they made their run when Great went out of the game. Uh, but it was you know we had some not so smart plays like his foul. He can't be doing that. He's too good of a player to take himself out and then We got to contest on that last shot, which that's what guards got to do at this level. He's a good player. What's your best version of offense here in the second half? Yeah, you know, they, they kind of stymied us with great out of the game. We, our ball movement wasn't very good. We started playing a little too much one-on-one, -on -one, and they're too good of a defensive team to do that. Coach, appreciate you. You bet. A 19-5 run by San Diego State over the final seven minutes of the first half. That's the end of the first. Aggies by three. We'll get you to Brent Stover in our New York studio for 18 at the half right after this. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota. Together we do more by AT&T. We believe connecting changes everything. And by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Friday night in Vegas, first Mountain West semifinal of the evening. We take a look at the first half numbers. Aztecs really struggled at the free throw line, but they end the half on a 19 to 5 run. And hi everyone, with Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. We'll hear from Evan Washburn coming up. A game of runs in that first half. Yeah, no doubt, but you got to give Utah State a lot of credit. They shot 48%, which is hard to do against San Diego State. San Diego State, they've stayed in this game because they have 11 points off turnovers. And the problem is Utah State only has six turnovers, but four of those six are steals. Live ball turnovers, a lot of points from that. It's an incredible stat. Darion Trammell, seven times this year, has hit a shot within the final three seconds of the first half buzzer. I mean, that's really an unbelievable <laughs> statistic for that to happen, and that just wasn't great defense there. Martinez is a good defender, needed to be closer, especially with the height advantage that he has, contest that shot a little better. Let's check in with Evan. Yeah, Andrew, it's the San Diego State script, if you will. It worked last night against UNLV, and that's the plan, according to Brian Dutcher here in the second half. And he kept it simple, guys, as is always the case with the Aztecs, it starts defensively. He said, we have to guard better, especially getting back on in transition. And they know they're going to get a healthy dose of Asabor here to start the second half, and that's going to be critical. Yep. Yep. Right away, Asabor and Ladee banging away down low. I'm going to keep it simple for you, Andrew. The team that's going to win this game is the team whose big guy is going to be on the floor the longest. Yeah, I, I think that's very fair. Ladee, step back jumper is good. Asabor <laughs> sat in the final six minutes and 23 seconds of the first half. And that's what Ladee can do. He can play a little bit more on the perimeter than Asabor can. Let's see if Osibor can get back in the flow. He, he basically has sat for about 35 minutes of real time. He's got the ball here. And Ladee poked it away out of bounds. It'll stay with the Aggies. Shot clock is at seven. Johnson trying to go right up with it. Powell got a piece of it. And out of bounds to San Diego State. Great defense by Jay Powell. Yeah, this is really it. Powell played well yesterday also. Good block and a good call. 
Yesterday nearly had a double-double with 10 points and 9 rebounds. The D, he's going to take another jumper. Not this time. I think he, he can't fall in love with that, especially with Austin Moore having the two fouls. He's got to go at him a little bit. Johnson has position. He had Butler on him, and he took advantage. Yeah, Martinez, great awareness there to see that Butler was guarding Johnson. Parrish hits the triple. A different player tonight, Micah Parrish. He's got 13. He's six of seven from the floor. All tied up at 41. Johnson again on the attack, and he draws the foul. Johnson began his career at Oregon. And this is his first year at Utah State, and a short time ago, what a win for Oregon. They beat Arizona just down the road at the Pac-12 tournament. Arizona's hit the skids lately. Lost to USC big last week. They were being talked about as a one seed a couple weeks ago. Powell was on Powell. That's his second. I think Carolina's claiming that last yeah, one. Yeah, it looks spot that now. way. Yeah. Tennessee, who so many people are high on, had a tough one today against Mississippi State. Yeah, Dalton Connect, four for 17. Worst game he played all year. Harris. Ladi, the offensive rebound. Goes right back up. And no. And a whistle. And a foul. No, they call no. it on Johnson. That's the second on Johnson. Asabor did look like he calling it on me, <laughs> yeah. but quickly they said it was number 20. And they show the replay on the scoreboard here. And the Utah State fans don't agree. Ladie at the line. Ladie entered tonight 37 points behind Michael Cage's single season scoring record at San Diego State. And with the way the Aztecs are positioned going forward, he's got a good chance to break it. Eight points tonight, make it nine. Well, you know, the amazing thing about this kid is how much better he's got. He averaged eight points a game last year. The only other player in the country to average 20 points per game, better than eight rebounds per game, and shoot 55% from the floor, Zach Eady of Purdue. Pretty nice company, company for Ladie. Yeah. They got to try and get the ball inside. Ball slip nearly lost it. Asabor rejected. Good defense again. That's Jay Powell. Great deep position. Off the feed from Paris. First lead since it was 15-14, and it was short-lived as Brown knocks it down. The D from the outside. His 16th three of the year. He had none in his career up until this year. 0 for 16 prior to this year. We've had seven lead changes this evening. Martinez trying to answer, and he does. That was a big time move. He lost Travell there.
Aztecs trailed by as many as 17 in the first half. There's the double. Johnson come with a double. Where D gets, at, gets rid of it with the shot clock at seven. Butler pops from the outside. Another three for the Aztecs. Six three for San Diego State. Asabor and the tie up is called. It'll be Aggies basketball when we come back, but the action is heating up here in Vegas. San Diego State, five of seven to begin the half. You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. This Sunday on CBS, who's in, who's out? It will all be revealed on the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Selection Show this Sunday, 6 Eastern on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Here's the number one seeds to lose so far. We mentioned Arizona losing just down the road to Oregon earlier tonight. Three one seeds in action as we speak. Utah State right here in a close one. UC Irvine and Grand Canyon, two other one seeds also in tight games right now as we move closer to Selection Sunday. Well, at least Arizona and Tennessee can sleep easy. They're not happy about the way they played, certainly, but they know they're going to be in the bracket when it comes out. Good crowd here in Las Vegas for the first semifinal at the Thomas and Mack Center. Still to come later tonight, New Mexico will take on Colorado State. The lap, we've been coming here for over a decade. This is our 12th tournament. I don't remember too many times when the upper deck has been as filled up as it is tonight. Let's face it, this is a banner year for the Mountain West with six teams probably going to the tournament. And I'll tell you what, Martinez making up for lost time from yesterday. Yeah, one for 12 yesterday. Martinez has 14 tonight. Gone by in the second half. With D, with help from Brown, out to Butler, triple. You know, when San Diego State shoots it like this, they just haven't been able to stop Utah State. Talked to San Diego State assistant David Velasquez before the game. He said, We just need to see a couple of three goes in, threes go in. If we do that, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. Well, they're starting to go in for San Diego State, and this is why they're tough to beat if they can hit that outside shot. You know, because in the end, you know they're going to guard, and that was really a bad shot by Martinez there, trying to shoot over a 6'9", Jay Powell. Danny Sprinkle thought it was a foul, but it was just not a good shot. And they need to get Osibor more involved in this game. The D's involved, is not right now. Good defense by Brown. Now Ledee. Here comes the double. Johnson. Ledee over Osibor. He's making that 14-foot baseline jumper. Utah State was up 17 in the first half. And a foul down low on Powell. Well, Ledee with foul trouble in the first half. He scored 11 of his 16 here in the second half. Third foul on Powell, so he comes out. Asabor, and he gets one to drop. Thirteen for great. First points of the half for the junior from England. Butler gets to the hoop, could not finish, but a foul is called. And it 
It's on Asabor. That's his third. Wow. With 13 21 to go. What do you do here if you're Danny Sprinkle? <laughs> it's a tough one. Probably got to come out for two minutes. Tomorrow, 1 Eastern, the A-10 semis are on CBS Sports Network. How about this bracket? St. Joe's against VCU, and then St. Bonaventure against Duquesne. So a big stealer from the A-10. I think he's going to come out for a couple of minutes. Martinez had a foul on Butler. Butler, who's been picking things up here in the second half. He's got eight of his 13 after halftime. But that's the third foul on Lamont Butler. No, Osborne staying in. I would take him out for a couple of minutes, I think. You're down five. And see what happens, because if he gets his fourth, he's going for a long time. There's a look at the foul trouble. Butler just went to the bench with three fouls. And a lot of times it's good to take him out so that he just sits and thinks, I have three fouls, you know what I mean? As opposed to, to continue to play. He's got to be careful on screens. Yeah. False left for three. And with D's there for the rebound. With D. Whoa. Just pure. You know, I think he was a little upset that he wasn't player of the year by the coaches. And, you know, playing with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. San Diego State has 21 field goals tonight and just three turnovers. But another foul against the Aztecs. I mean, he's made a bunch of jumpers in this game. Second foul on Reese Waters. He was the first player in Mountain West history to have a 30-15 plus game in the Mountain West tournament. Asabor off the mark. We almost saw two yesterday because Asabor 29 17. Right. But a 24 point swing in this game. Parrish. Osibor got a piece of it. And a whistle down low against Elijah Saunders as he was digging up Osibor. Already five team fouls against the Aztecs here in the second. I, I don't use a foul. Wow. The D comes out, media timeout coming. Brown's been quiet. False lev, open look. Saunders the rebound. Not his strength, 30% three point shooter. Tremell is fouled, oh. shooting the three. Huh. Martinez bails out the Aztecs. Did he foul? Martinez doesn't think so. But it'll be three free throws for Tremell when we come back. What a turnaround for San Diego State. They lead by seven. Now, let's look back at tonight's keys to the game, which were brought to you by Daisy Cottage Cheese. Well, forced turnovers, they've done a good job, San Diego State, and they've scored 11 points off those turnovers. Limit fouls on Austin Borg, yeah, they haven't fouled him, but they also haven't really, he's kind of been stopping himself, though. Ever since he got that second foul, he has not been the same guy. Utah State, get out and run, haven't really been able to get out there and do what they like to do, and limit fouls on Ladee, that has happened, 
But the D has 18 points in this game. He's 7 for 10 from the field. Aztecs have hit seven three-pointers tonight. Yeah, when they shoot the ball like this, they're really, really hard to beat because of the way they defend. And they're getting it from the Lamont Butler's been making them and Michael Parrish making. So, and then you have even Ladee making. So, when they, when they shoot like that, it's hard because they'll guard you without a doubt. San Diego State has just one turnover in the last 19 minutes and 30 seconds. And Trammell will get three free throws. I know one thing, if this thing, we got a long, long way to go, but if this thing ends up with San Diego State win, the turning point in the game was very clear to me. Because Osibor hasn't really played well since you sat out. Only two points this half for great. One of three from the floor. Over to Evan. And guys, I've been keeping a close eye on Asabor. And to your point, he just doesn't look like he has the same burst and wind in this game. Remember, yesterday he feasted on a smaller lineup for Fresno State. I think the toll that it takes to go up against Liddy over the course of a game. Again, even though in limited minutes here with the foul trouble, he just doesn't look like he has the same explosion and burst. We'll see if he catches it here down the stretch. Yeah, I agree with you, Evan. And Brown is really struggling. Brown gets it back. Osibor, tough pass to Templin, and a turnover. And he's normally a very good passer. He's second on the team in assists. I think that Utah State's got to make hay right now with D out of the game. Trammell airballs a three. A 27-point swing in this game. Asabor with Heidi back. Asabor right at Heidi, and he draws the foul. Heidi fell asleep. Foul the Aztecs number 40, Miles Heidi, his second personal. So Asabor heads to the free throw line. Sixth in the nation in free throw attempts per game, averaging eight per night. And Ladee's coming back. zone now from Utah State first time waters hangs and finishes he was one of five in the first half but a beautiful move there by the USC transfer so Utah State changes defenses goes to the one three one and they score right away bad pass with D running the break with Parrish joining him with D to Parrish But D comes away with it and scores. He's been a monster in this game. 20 points for Ladee. And Utah State gives it right back. They are losing their cool here big time. And I agree with Evan even more. It looks like Osibor is huffing and puffing. Aztecs fans on their feet in Vegas. Parrish, that's a two, and it's short. Waters knocks it right to Templin. Up ahead of the pack is Jackson. Parrish back. Jackson gets it to drop. Only two points this half for Osibor, and the Aggies trail by 11. I think those two things go hand in hand, then, no doubt. Oh, what a bounce pass, and then a charge against Ladeen. Templin a draws it. Really rare secondary defender charge. 
the D did not leave his feet. So if you don't leave your feet, the old, he was gonna leave his feet. So the old rule comes into play. Third foul on the D. With 8.52 to go. If he leaves his feet there, it's a block. Just the second turnover by the Aztecs in the last 22 minutes. Both the big guys have three fouls apiece. 15 of the 20 for Ladie have come here in the second half. I mean, also more out here, even though he's good going off the dribble. Jackson's three is not there. And Butler will calm things down for San Diego State. Waters just inside the line, knocks it down. He's been a factor today, too. Asabor with the D back. Asabor spinning in the paint oh. with the left hand. And his second field goal of the half. He is good off that dribble. Five on the shot clock. Bird juggled it a bit. Bird with three. Bounces it to Ladee. Top turnaround will go. Nasibor handling the break. Johnson straightaway three. That's a big shot. And that's what they like to do. Push the ball up in transition. Spot up. Five quick points for the Aggies. And that leads Brian Dutcher to call a timeout. 7.06 to go. Aggies trying to chip away at the deficit. An eight-point game as you watch Bracket Week presented by Kubota. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Daisy. Creamy, pure, and natural cottage cheese. Only Daisy cottage cheese will do. Back in Vegas, and it's an eight-point San Diego State lead. Mountain West semifinal number one in the nightcap. It'll be Colorado State, the seven seed, and they are in the house watching this one. Taking on New Mexico, there is Richard Patino, the New Mexico head coach, watching as well. That's coming your way next on CBS Sports Network. Well, Utah State in the first half, 16 points in the paint, only eight here in the second half. And as we pointed out, it's been a different half for Great Osibor. Can they get him going? You know, Darius Brown, three for nine. Quiet. First team all league player. Yep. Ladi right to work. No. Ladi gets it back. Ladi with separation. This is another. And the rebound to Brown. This is when they're at their best. But a good job. As how about San Diego State the way they got back that time? That three halfway down and out for Aduje. With six and a half to go. Whoa. Butler, what a move. <laughs> 15 for Lamont Butler. Johnson. Isaac Johnson. You know, Tramiel and Butler have really played like experienced guards yesterday and today. And Evan said this yesterday, but 
the big thing that San Diego State has taken away from last year's run to the national championship game is confidence when they fall behind. They know that they're capable of going on a run. They weathered the storm in the first half, and they have really come to play here in the second. And they get their bench was terrible yesterday, much different today. Brown. Oh, why didn't he shoot that? Johnson left alone, but misses. Out of bounds to San Diego State. Looked like Brown had an open alleyway to the hoop. Instead, he passes. Lamont Butler, the hero in the national semifinals a year ago, a beauty here in Vegas. Make sure to tune in to the 2024 Reese's College All-Star Game. It's presented by Walmart. It's live April 5th at 6.30 Eastern right here on CBS Sports Network. Here in Vegas, San Diego State, a 10-point lead with 5.22 on the clock. Back with Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. How do the Aggies pull this one out if they're going to make a run? I think, first of all, they're going to start playing some defense. I mean, they've given up 73 points to the Aztecs, and the Aztecs are on a 34-game win streak when they score 80. They're getting pretty close to that 80 point. The defense of Utah State has really let them down. And how about this, Andrew? They're number two in defending the three-point shot in the country, 28%, and San Diego State, seven for 17 from three. Here in the second half, the Aztecs are shooting 59%. They're four of seven from deep, and they have seven assists and just one turnover. Four turnovers for the game. They really can't play much better offensively, I don't think. Saunders has not been able to get it going this week, but an offensive rebound to Waters. Waters has really played hard. And he scores. Over to Evan. It's like you guys were in Danny Sprinkle's huddle because the focus is all defensively. The high ball screen feels like they need to do a better job being physical with the guards. He said this game's going to come down to getting stops and being tougher. And guys, they just haven't been that the last couple minutes. No, no doubt about it. They have not been able to stop them. You know, it's got nothing to do with what their offense is doing, but San Diego State scoring every time down. And we're talking about a team that is 30% on the season in the Mountain West with a three-point line, and they're just lighting them up. You see the second-half numbers have not missed a free throw here in the second half. They do have 18 fouls to just three for Utah State, and Brown hits the front end. Tramel brings it across. Time is on San Diego State side. Four and a half to go. And they're trying to zone now. 1-3-1. One, one. Well, late yesterday, UNLV's 1-3-1 one, one gave San Diego State some problems. Four on the shot clock. Saunders from the corner. And the rebound is ripped away by Ian Martinez. And he's been a really good three-point shooter for them all year. One of their better guys, and he hasn't made one in two days. And then Trammell is called for the foul, and that'll send the Aggies right back to the line. Third on Trammell. A lot of body there. That's a foul. At the line of the board, Ian Martinez. Shooting one and one. If the Aztecs are able to close this out, they would advance to the Mountain West Championship game for the seventh consecutive year in 10 of the past 11. Let's, let's face it, they've owned this thing. It's the only way to put it. And you gotta knock them out if you wanna win this. That's it. Martinez gets them both, and now a whistle and a substitution as Lamont Butler comes back in for Reese Waters. Yeah, Reese Waters did a really good job.
Ten points for Waters tonight to go along with four rebounds. I don't know why somebody at Utah State doesn't, isn't calling that screen out. The guy got leveled twice in a row. Parrish, deep three. And his zone is, yeah, a little trouble for San Diego And that time State. they switched it. They were a 2-3 that time. Brown for three. Oh, air ball. Johnson tries to save it. He does. Good hustle, but he saved it right to Butler. And Trammell will slow it up. Now Trammell sends it out to Butler. Wide open three. And another air ball. Whoa. Utah State has to just keep defending. Oh, Asabor, and there's the foul on the D. That's his fourth. Asabor will go to the line when we come back. 3-12 to go. Aztecs have taken control in the second half, but do the Aggies have a late run in them? Find out when we come back. Coming up next, the road to the Final Four continues as our college basketball experts break down all the latest action. Conference tournament time. It's inside college basketball right here on CBS Sports Network. The foul trouble, and the big story now is Ladie has four with 312 to go. Would you take him out right now? With an eight-point lead, even though we don't know what Osibor is shooting uh, two shots now, I think I would take him out for a minute and just see how it goes. Because you know one thing, they're going to go at him every single time where they certainly should. I would probably take him out for a few seconds and see what happens. Well, Brian Dutcher does have him out there. Asabor two for four at the line tonight. And gets two shots. You know, he's the sixth most fouled guy in America. And this is a part of his game that he's really got to work on. One out of two, a Duje returns. Asabor goes out. That's interesting. They wanted to go with their pressure. So they took him out. They go right after Butler, and he turns it over. And Asabor hops off the bench. He's coming right back in. Yeah, they went with the small, fast team. What a move there by Danny Sprinkle. Yeah, really good move. Just the second San Diego State turnover this half. Jackson That's puts one up. It's an air ball. Who touched it last? Martinez. I mean, you have to get the ball. They're going to press again now. Osterberg, you got to get him the ball. Look, he's got four fouls. You got to find a way. Osterberg goes back to the bench so they can set up their pressure again. Well, tough pass. Almost another one. That's a foul. And it's called. They got fouls to give. They do. Just the fourth team foul against Utah State. That's a good foul in terms of going for a steal. If you foul, you foul. So what? They're going to take the ball out of bounds anyway. Four straight empty trips for San Diego State. They got a small team in now. I don't know if they're going to be able to keep San Diego State off the glass. Paul Sled's got the uh, D. Another foul. I don't think they're trying to give him already. Now, Danny Sprinkle did not seem pleased no. with that foul. I mean, you want to save him at least for, you know, a little while. Oh, I guess he's using him. I don't know. Well, I'd rather, I'd rather play good defense and have that in my back pocket. It's too early, I think, to do that, in my opinion. Not to mention, San Diego State is 7 of 7 from the free throw line this half. And now they're going to be shooting 1 and 1. Waters right through the paint, missed the shot. 
Powell gets it back. Now Osibor trying to rip it away. It ends up with Ladie, who's fouled. And now he's going to shoot. I don't know about to use all those fouls this early. Third foul on Martinez. It is a one and one. And you don't want to be sitting there with three fouls to give with, you know, 20 seconds to go in the game. No, but at 245, I didn't think that was necessary. Ladie, three for four from the free throw line tonight. Butler's the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year, so Brian Dutcher wants him out there. Tremell heads out. Ladie with 16 second half points. I'd be shocked if they don't throw the ball into. Ball, Brown out to Martinez. A DJ for three. I, I, you know. Yeah, I hear you. If I'm saying they go, say I'm happy. Ladine's not going to get a foul. Martinez fouls Butler at midcourt. Their best player is not taking the shot. Fourth on Martinez. And the Aztecs fans who always travel so well here in Las Vegas are happy they booked that hotel for an extra night because it looks like San Diego State is coming back to the championship game once again. The defending Mountain West Tournament champions. I think when they're selling those packages from San Diego State, they're three night packages. <laughs> I'm telling you. 10-point lead. Asabor right at Ladie. And he called on Ladie. He did. That's his fifth. Asabor went right at Ladie. Which maybe they should have done a yeah. few possessions ago. Well, if you did it a minute ago, yeah. it would have been, you know, you would have three minutes to come back. I mean, the thing about Asabor, too, the guy's hard to guard. Chance of MVP from the Aztecs fans, as Coach Lapis pointed out earlier. It was a tight race for player of the year. It went to Asabor over Ladie, and the Aztecs fans are letting everybody know who they think should have got it. No, well, this is not over yet. Well, that's not helping. Three of seven from the free throw line is great Asabor. And then you see the signs. And you're right, Ladie did look to play with a chip on his shoulder tonight. And Asabor is just in disbelief at his free throw line struggles. Evan? Guys, I spoke with Great this morning about the free throw struggles. And he admitted at this point it's become mental. And he's tried to lean on his routine. He told me he gets all the work in. He takes plenty of them. There are points this season, as he laid out, that he was close to 90%. But... As you know, Coach, once a player gets in their head about it a little bit, uh, it, it can be hard to overcome. Hey, it's like Catalan's got the yips when he putts. You know what I mean? He, 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 he can attest to these kind of things. Scotty Scheffler over here next to me. <laughs> but no, there's no doubt, Evan, that it, the free throw line is definitely the most mental thing there is in basketball. The other things you react. You don't have time to think. It's the one thing in basketball where you have time to think about it. And that's why you get in your head. You got annoyed at me for saying that. No, no. <laughs> I, knew, I knew who was saying it. <laughs> well, if this is it for Utah State, here in the Mountain West Tournament. What do you think their prospects are for the NCAA Tournament? They better play better. This kid here, number 10, 
He's got to play better. Darius Brown. He's got to play like an all-league player. He has not. Asabor and a foul. I mean, that's a pretty incredible record that San Diego State, they're, if they win, they're going to be 35 games in a row where they score 80 and win. It is a tricky turnaround to the three o'clock local time start tomorrow. Aztecs get the benefit when they fell to the fifth seed of playing here in the early semifinal, which certainly works to their favor going against the winner of either New Mexico or Colorado State. And whoever wins the next game is going to have to play their fourth game in four days. Correct. And I, no one's ever won the tournament doing that. It'll be the first time a team in the first round even gets to the championship game. And another foul with 127 to go, and these Aztecs fans on their feet. Jay Powell with an exclamation point. I tell you, Jay Powell is he's a good player. He does a lot of things for you. He'll block a shot, rebound. And for a thin kid, he's pretty tough. At the line, number 14, Reese Water is shooting two shots. Well, Jerry Palm has Utah State projected right now as a four seed. We'll see if it stays that way after this one. but. The Aggies have not won an NCAA tournament game since 2001. They've lost 10 straight games in the tournament. I think four is a little high. I mean, I think after this, I, I'm looking at them being more of a five, six. But, you know, we'll see. Obviously, they're losing to a quality team here. Aggies will be the 16th conference champion to lose in the conference tournament. This game flipped on that second foul by Osibor, which was a bad foul. It changed the whole game. Aztecs trailed by as many as 17 points. So we have a 30-point swing wow. in this semifinal. Waters. Butler comes away with it. Well, San Diego State finished the regular season four and four, and there were some questions about the Aztecs coming into the week, but this looks like a team that made a deep run last March. They're playing with that same confidence and swagger and poise. No doubt about it. And when you throw all that together with the good defense, oh. That could be a big yeah. shot for tomorrow. Saunders has struggled this week, knocks down the three. Aztecs fouling with eight seconds left. Aggies 67 percent at the free throw line tonight and they miss another five seconds left Jackson for three and the Aztecs 
Bucks are marching back into the Mountain West Championship game. Seventh straight year that Brian Dutcher and San Diego State will play in the championship game here in Las Vegas. San Diego State shoots 52% in the second half. And Ledee finishes with 22 points and eight rebounds. This is what they started to do when they got on that run in the tournament last year. They started scoring because they guard. So fifth seeded San Diego State advances to tomorrow's championship game, six o'clock Eastern time on CBS. Coming up next, it's Colorado State and New Mexico to see who will join the Aztecs on CBS tomorrow. So Utah State, the number one seed, is sent packing here in Las Vegas, but they will get another chance in the NCAA tournament next week. Evan is with Jaden Ledee. Jaden, you guys are going to need to start bottling up whatever happens at halftime with this group, because for the second straight day, you guys took it over in the second half. What flip things? Uh, I just think how we just stay consistent. We stay on a journey. You know, it's a tale of two halves. We've been, you know, we've been in this March Madness thing before, so we just, you know, we're easy in the storm. Yeah, you mentioned that. Obviously, the run last year, the experience in this group. How much do you lean on that in those moments, especially for you? Foul trouble in the first half when things aren't going your way. Oh, I'm good. I mean, I got two fouls, but I got ultimate trust in my teammates. They came out here and carried me today, and I'm, you know, I'm happy we got the win. When you hear this crowd chanting MVP, when you're matching up with the guy who got the MVP, what's going through your mind? Uh, I mean, hey, I, Grace a great player. I mean, I didn't, you know, I, him getting MVP was cool. You know, I was out of my control, but, you know, my fans love me. I mean, San Diego State has our back forever, and I'm just, you know, grateful to be here. Lastly, seventh straight Mountain West title game for this program. You guys are going to await the winner of this one. Your thoughts on another championship opportunity? We just gonna game plan and stay the course. I mean, the coach is gonna put us in the right positions and be successful tomorrow. We're gonna be ready to go. That's it. Congrats. We'll see you tomorrow. Yes, sir. See you tomorrow. All the right answers there from Jaden Ledee as San Diego State is back in the Mountain West Championship game. So for Steve Lapis, Evan Washburn, our entire crew, this is Andrew Catalan saying so long from Las Vegas for now. We'll be back for the second semifinal in a little bit. But right now, Brent Stover is in our New York studio.